one day we were him, just him and I were out fishing, and I was just jabbering, jabbering about how I thought it was so wonderful, and I wish we could homeschool our family. And Ron, I says it would be so fun. I says, you know, so finally he gets sick of me, and he says, fine. And I was kind of, I can't teach my kids to read and stuff like that, you know. And uh, I just thought, oh, I just hope it never happens, you know. <laughs> At the time they pulled us out, it was really hard. Beforehand, about well, six months or so, we had wanted to be homeschooled. And then after I started sports and got into the year, I didn't want to be homeschooled at all. Well, I've just come down to the point where homeschooling is an obligation. Um, we don't have the Catholic schools even that we trust. You know, the Catholic schools have been filled full of all kinds of secular things and a lack of, of imparting the fullness of the Catholic faith. So uh, we that homeschool, I think, have just come down to the point where there just simply isn't any other choice. But the other part of it is that we, when, when you get kind of addicted to it, you don't want any other choice. Somehow you really believe that this kind of contact between parents and children is the right way to go, that it offers an element into the educational process that God meant to be there. And so um, even though there's often a big struggle involved with it, I mean, it really does represent a cross. It's a cross that feels deeply right. In a number of towns in central Minnesota, from Alexandria in the west, Clarissa in the north, Little Falls in the east, and Sox Center in the south, a variety of families, united in their Catholic faith and in their desire to fulfill God's vocation in their lives by raising their children in a Catholic Christian atmosphere, have been homeschooling their children. How we got started in homeschooling was five years ago, actually five and a half years ago, and I had met Linda Dinko and her family, and I found out she homeschooled, and I said, homeschooling? I thought that was illegal, you know? So we got to talking about it, and she says, Sue, there's some, we, I belong to a homeschool group. She says, there's some other folks you need to meet. I had to get permission from Ron to homeschool, and which wasn't easy, because I, was, I couldn't do it on my own. I couldn't just say, okay, honey, we're going to homeschool. Okay, kids, guess what? So I had to get Ron to agree to it, and he went. He says, well, let me think about it. So he thought about it for like six months, and then finally he said, Sue, I know this is going to hurt your feelings, but he says, my decision is no. So I cried for three days straight, and I was talking to one of the other mothers, and she said, Sue, maybe he can't say yes. So I thought, fine, I'll just keep talking to him about it. And one day, we were him, just him and I were out fishing, and I was just jabbering, jabbering about how I thought it was so wonderful, and I wish we could homeschool our family. And Ron, I says, it would be so fun. I says, you know. So finally he gets sick of me and he says, fine, you, go ahead, homeschool. You're going to do it anyway. I says, Ron, that's not true, not without your permission. He says, just do what you want to do. When uh, Sue, my wife, first brought it to my attention, yes, I was very much against it at first. Well, with a lot of prodding on her part, I guess she had visited a few homeschooling families and she convinced me that uh, very grudgingly that we should start homeschooling. So I agreed to let her try so I pouted a little bit more, and I came back to him, and I says, Honey, fine. If that's the only blessing I'm going to get, I'm going to go with it. So I got together with a couple of the other mothers, and they helped me order books. We got started, and I loved it. And within three weeks, I started to see a change in the whole family. And um, Jim Larson was helping us with uh, history in kind of an English class, and he asked the kids to write an essay about homeschooling. My second daughter, who the one who begged, don't ruin my life, don't ruin my life. Please, Mom, don't ruin my life. Let me stay in public school. You can homeschool everybody else, but don't homeschool me. Everybody else was for it, but not Missy. <laughs> anyway, she wrote this essay, and this was just, mind you, three weeks into homeschooling, and she was a sophomore, 
and it was the most beautiful essay I'd ever written or read. And she said things like, I didn't want my parents to homeschool me because I thought it would ruin my life. And now I can see just this quickly that I was always living for tomorrow, always living for the next event. And I didn't, I didn't appreciate my family. I, I wasn't seeing my little brothers and sisters and I was always wanting to go, go, go. And she says, and I'm so happy that my parents made this decision. And I ran outside and I says, Ron, Ron, come and read this. And he came and he, he was standing there under the tree and he's reading this essay. And he looked at me and he got kind of teary eyed. And from that moment on, it was, the homeschooling was like his idea. We've been homeschooling for nine years now. And when we first made the decision to start homeschooling, it was, at that time, it was really heavy on my heart. The kids, we had two children in school, and they were gone so much. We, at the time, we lived about five miles away from town, but the bus ride for the children was on the order of an hour to hour and a half each way. So the kids would get on the bus early in the morning and then come home late in the evening and, or late in the afternoon, <clears throat> and just were feeling like we weren't seeing our kids very much. The main thing, I think, that influenced um, my decision or my wanting to look into homeschooling and wanting to have the children home um, was the amount of time they were away and knowing that their formation is my responsibility, our responsibility, the, the parents are the first educators of the children have, um, you know, to delegate that away and not, not have anything, any part of their formation and their education just didn't feel right. So Jane had approached me when Jake was in second grade, so roughly the year before, about entertaining the idea of homeschooling. And so we did some research on it, and I committed to, to giving her my thoughts on it at, by a certain date. And at that time, um, we ended up going to a homeschool conference down in the cities just to see what homeschooling was about because I had no concept of it. Um, and the different families that we saw there, we were impressed with both children that were there and how they behaved, but then just the families and what kind of their attitude was toward families. So that kind of, for me, pushed me over the edge to say, yeah, let's give it a try. I, I wouldn't have imagined how much my life would change with homeschooling, and I couldn't have imagined um, how beautiful and full it would be. Jim used to talk about he didn't like schools. He said, I just want to keep my children at home. And this was before he was a Catholic. And I was kind of, oh, I can't teach my kids to read and stuff like that, you know. And uh, I just thought, oh, I just hope it never happens, you know. <laughs> I was just a, a new Catholic. I had just converted. And um, um, I'd gotten involved in a curriculum committee meeting in, in Hill City, where we lived before. And um, basically it came down to the point where what they were saying was that they couldn't teach any kind of values. They, the subject of abortion came up, the subject of homosexuality came up. And I said, well, aren't you going to tell people that these are wrong? And basically the answer was that, you know, we, uh, we can't do that. Our priority was that we wanted to give them a Catholic education. And you couldn't do the Catholic part at home because the Catholic... Education it includes everything because it affects all your subjects. And there's no way you can put Jesus Christ in the middle of your whole, as the center of history, and try and teach separate from him. As I became more formed in my Catholic faith, then uh, I realized that uh, all education had to be a matter of education for eternity, education for God, and that if you excluded these values, from any part of the educational process that, uh, you know, falsified it. Uh, Pius XI wrote an encyclical in the 30s, 38, I think, in 1938, uh, on the Christian education. He said there's absolutely no way uh, a, a neutral religion, uh, I mean, a neutral 
education is bound, he said, to become anti-religious. You know, so how am I as a parent, as a sincere Christian and Catholic parent, how am I going to justify my sending our children to a system that is bound to become anti-religious, which it has become. And so we were uh, just bound in conscience, basically, to take our children out, out of the public education system. Well, the first time that we got together with the homeschool group was at a picnic. I brought my three older girls that weren't homeschooled yet. <clears throat> and it was, I still remember walking into this picnic and feeling just the kids, the girls did not want to be there. So we walked in and all of a sudden all these kids started coming toward my children. And I'm just standing there looking at this. And they started introducing themselves. Hi, I'm, I'm Leah. Hi, I'm Rachel. Hi, I'm Mary, you know. And the kids, it was just unreal. The girls felt so comfortable. It was so nice. At that time, I think there were 66 kids in the homeschool group that we joined at that time, the Catholic homeschool group. And it was not, oh gosh, I'm thinking it was that following year that the, that homeschool group had to split and start a new one. And now the group that we're in now, I'm not even sure how many kids are in it now, but I think it's like 78, I'm not even sure, something in that. The reason why I think that it is growing is people are starting to see what these kids are up against out there. I, it breaks my heart to see the kids, what they have to go through now. I'm just, but anyway, um, you, you watch, I think back, I graduated, what, it'll be to my 20th year anniversary this year. And I think what we had to go through then and what the kids have to now, there is no way that I would want to be out into what they have to be up against. It's, it's gotten so much worse. You know, they hear, you just hear about the 1960s on how the sex and drugs of, you know, just, but today, I mean, and it starts so young with the kids, so the kids, they don't have a chance to be children. And when I think of success, I don't think of money. It's, it's what are we doing for God? And it's really hard to live for God when you're in the public school system because it's so much for the people. If I can give our kids a desire to learn and a desire to live their faith as a Catholic. That's my ultimate goal. I remember when David and I had Sarah. I keep saying Sarah because she's our oldest child. But I remember that, that time when she was in the hospital and everyone had left. David went home, the nurses were gone, the doctors were gone. It was the first time it spent with Sarah in the hospital. And I remember sitting there holding her, looking into her eyes and she's looking up at me. And I'm just, oh, she's so cute, looking at her toes, looking at her feet. And, and all of a sudden this thought came into my mind and it said, I would rather have this baby die now than to let her live a life, her full life, and go to hell. And in, this thought scared me to death. I thought, where did that come from? Here I'm thinking of my baby. Holding my baby and having this thought come into my mind, I, it just scared me to death. But then after I realized, I thought, that's what parent parenting is all about. You're holding this baby and it's your goal to get that child to heaven. And it's my obligation to do what I have to do. And so the reactions from people sometimes, I, I don't care what people think anymore. You have to do what you have to do to fulfill your obligation. And that's what it's all about. homeschooling. I never knew such a simple word could mean so much to me. I have been homeschooled for about a year now and it has been one of the best years of my life. I have to admit that when I was pulled out of public school I thought my life was pretty much over. I couldn't imagine life without my friends from school. But now that I am out of public school I would never go back. It's so amazing how my morals and beliefs have changed so drastically in the past year. When you're in a Catholic homeschool group, you're amongst people with the same beliefs where you can openly talk about God and your faith. Through homeschooling, I've been able to carry out God's will for me as a teenager. 
Another reason I love homeschooling is because I have friends who really care what happens to me. They care about my spiritual life as well as my well-being. The most important thing about my friends is that the peer pressure is not there. When you're in high school, the peer pressure is outrageous. Sometimes I don't think parents can even comprehend what kids our age have to go through in high school. If all parents understood the evils of most public schools, I pray that they would not continue to send their own children, whom they are responsible for, both body and soul, to public school. My relationship with my family, especially my parents, has gotten unbelievably closer. I can't even remember the last time I've been this happy. I no longer hear, Sarah, smile. I don't know what the future holds for me, but I pray that I am able to carry out God's holy will and continue to grow closer to God. Oh my gosh, I can't believe how much my life has changed since this. I wrote this three and a half years ago. I just graduated last year. And it's kind of funny because I wrote, I don't know what my future holds for me, but I pray that I'm able to carry out God's holy will. And it's kind of funny because I'm getting married in three weeks. So my life has definitely changed a lot. And I can't even, it just brought back a lot of memories and not all of them good. But I'm just so happy that my parents did pull me out, even though I wasn't happy at the time. At the time they pulled us out, it was really hard. Beforehand, about well, six months or so, we had wanted to be homeschooled. And then after I started sports and got into the year, I didn't want to be homeschooled at all. But once I was and we met the people and they were so nice <laughs> that it went really well and everybody's just so nice and makes you feel welcome and everything. I started homeschooling right when I was right at the beginning of school when I was five. And um, I remember being really excited about it. That's all I remember. And just being thrilled half to death that I got to sit at a desk with everybody else and do my school. And I remember loving it. I was about ninth grade and mom took me out. She it was about, it was 1995 when I started homeschooling, and um, for me, it was a shocker, and I didn't want to do it, but after a month or two, it was, it was great. I liked it. <laughs> my relationship with my family has increased a lot, um, for the better, <laughs> and I don't know, I don't even know really why. It's just, everything's more family-orientated. You do things together. You, I don't know. I don't really know why, but... It, it did get a lot better. My relationship with my family is different because before I thought my friends were more important and they were the first, but now I realize that family is the first thing and if you don't have that, then you basically have nothing. Being in the home while I'm schooling, my family has become everything to me. They, they're my school, they're my family, they're the most loved people in my life because they're the people I spent the last 20 years with. Well I feel different from the people in public school because there's like no peer pressure in homeschooling and stuff. You, they, I can see it from just kids I used to go to school with how they have so much pressure on them and things they talk about and discussions they have is just like oh my goodness that stuff does not go on in our group. <laughs> my goodness I would hate that <laughs> and it is hard for them. I know it's hard for them and a lot of peer pressure. A lot. <laughs> the friends I have now are different than the ones I had in public school because they like to talk about real things, not just, um, you know, what kind of trouble did you get into last weekend? And they actually have normal conversations that you can have fun and laugh and not be worried about is this right or wrong or it's just they're a lot more fun and you can have fun and laugh and not be worried about getting in trouble from your parents the next day because you did something wrong. I felt very different from the kids that had not been homeschooled that were, that were in a normal public school. Um, it was not a bad different, it was a good different. I did not see them as bad either. I just saw that the way I was living, that the way my parents, the gift they gave me in homeschooling, that I didn't have to deal with peer pressure, that I didn't have to deal with all the negative things that go on in the public school. I can't really put my finger on a special certain thing, but I just did. I feel really grateful and I really felt different, a good different. A lot of times when I visit with the kids that aren't homeschooled and they find out that I am homeschooled, one of the first questions they always ask is, 
well, do you get to sleep in and do you get to do your school in your pajamas? Do you get to watch TV all day? It is not like that at all. Mom does not allow that. We have to get up, get dressed, brush our teeth, do everything the same, daily duties first, and then do school. So it's not very lenient at all. <laughs> we can't just sit around in our pajamas all day. I get asked about missing out on a social life, missing out on sports, etc. Everywhere I go, work, everybody I meet that I tell I'm a homeschooler. Socialization is a big one when you talk to people, like at work, and everything they'll ask you. That's the first thing. I mean, not even over the education. It's yeah. socialization is the big one. You've got to get out, see people, talk to people. It's like, come on, we do that. And talking to adults, that's another one that helps a lot. I used to never be able to look anybody in the eye until I started homeschooling. It's like, they make you. They like look at you and ask you questions. Like, okay, you have to look at them. And now it's so much easier. I don't know if anybody else feels that way, but, but the little kids even talk to grown-ups like adults. <laughs> I mean, little seven-year-olds and sitting there having adult conversations. They're very mature <laughs> for their age. One response we often get when people find out we homeschool is that they're concerned about our socialization. You know, what about when are the kids going to get out of the house and see other people? And it's really too bad. I think people who don't realize, I, it's probably really hard to imagine what a homeschooling lifestyle really is like. Um, people must just picture us at home with our books, sitting, doing school all day and, and not doing anything else. But really, we lead a really normal life. We go out, um, have a lot of activities and, and visit a lot of different, um, actually, it's more of a, an issue for us that we end up doing too much and it's uh, more of a challenge to stay home enough. My re reply has always been, what's there to socially deprive them of? I mean, I see, what I see with the, the, the public education children is that, you know, they're all in the football clique or the cheerleader clique or this clique or into drugs or whatever. And these children in the, in the homeschooling thing, they have to run an entire gamut of social relationships and responsibilities. The old have to play with the young, the weak with the strong, the, the boys with the girls and so forth. And so you see really kind of magical things happening there in terms of these relationships. They are being socialized. We have, like I said, over 60, 70 kids that the kids all get together. So they are definitely getting socialization. And, and they have, the families will have parties, barn dances, which are just the first barn dance that we went to at Kroll's house was just unreal. I just sat there and, oh my gosh, this is so cool, it's swing dancing. I mean, and my girls learned how to do it. I mean, it's just, it's, it's so fun. It's just the socialization that they're getting is something that I wish I would have had when I was growing up. Uh, the kids all have a common value. So they, they all are Catholic. They all have this common goal. I definitely approve of this socialization. Before I was, you know, wondering who was at the party, if she was at a party or whatever, you know. But now it's like, you're going to party? Oh, good, have fun. You know, I trust the kids and I trust uh, the parents. And yeah, they get lots of socialization. Bonfires, volleyball parties through the summer. Great, <laughs> great socialization. Some of the difficulties that we've encountered um, would be, uh, I would say, in terms of planning some curriculum, selecting what was the right curriculum that we wanted to use for our kids. Because one thing that we've learned through homeschooling was just different learning styles that our children have and what tools we should be learn it, using to help them learn most effectively. I found that really challenging to make sure school got done. And like I said, when the little kids are sick, you know, it's not like you're sending the big ones off to school and then you just sit with your little ones and rock them because you have to rock them while you're teaching math or um, making sure somebody else is getting their reading done because kids are kids and they're going to try and skip out every time mom's not looking. So you've got to be really focused. And I remember <laughs> the funniest part is I can remember when one of the mothers was telling me, now homeschooling isn't easy. You're going to find you're not organized and you're going to find it's a real challenge to keep the kids motivated. And I thought, no, not me. You know, I was a very organized person and I had my day set. You know, I run by the clock and everything goes according to Hoyle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, after two years, you know, of really struggling to keep my schedule, I find that I am starting to get a little bit lax. 
because if somebody isn't feeling real well, you let them sleep in. Well, then everybody else says, <laughs> I want to sleep in. So you're constantly struggling to keep organization. And it isn't easy. Kids will do things to their parents they won't do, you know, at school. If a, parent, if a teacher at school tells them to do something, they aren't going to whine but they'll whine to parents, you know, and they'll do it a lot. In fact, I've had a lot of parents tell me the same thing. And I say, yeah, they'll whine or something. Well, they won't do that in, in the school system. So there are things you have to, you know, put up with. There are things that are crosses to carry. But the, you know, at the end of your life, you're going to say, I did the right thing. I guess the best thing, the most rewarding thing, is when your kids do get out of home and and get in the world and come home and tell you that they're so thankful that they were homeschooled because the, the people they meet outside the home and all the problems they have and stuff that, not that they were hidden from it, but that they didn't have to deal with it at such a young age. And when they go out in the world and have to deal with it, they're more equipped with, you know, their, their faith and their home life. One of the changes in my kids is respect. They respect us so much more. They'll thank you. When they're in school, they just say, we're, we're going to school. Big deal. I mean, they just, and they say they love you more. Stuff like that. It's just, you don't have the false at, or bad attitude from them. I mean, it's nice when you wake up in the morning and they're happy. When I found the homeschool group, Linda Dinkle led us that direction. I was so impressed with the friendliness. And we had the common ground of our faith. Each family had different personalities, just like you'll find anywhere in the world. And every family has their own way of doing things. But yet when they come together for a common purpose, there was nothing but joy and happiness and um, totally focused parents, you know? They knew what they wanted in this life and that was to teach their kids to the best of their ability to please God.